ChatGPT is good, but can we make it great again? Here are three settings you should change in ChatGPT to boost your productivity and quality of your results significantly. Two out of these three features work on the free plan. Only one of them is for like the paid user. I'm not gonna fluff it up, so let's dive in. So for a simple example, let's say I'm a travel blogger. If I just go to ChatGPT and be like, hey, can you give me blog ideas for my upcoming Croatia trip? I'm gonna get some ideas, but most likely they're not useful. They're literally garbage. I'm never gonna use them. And I'll be like, well, ChatGPT sucks. Then someone's gonna tell me like, hey, maybe you should write better prompts. So what I'll do like every single time, I'm gonna be like, hey, you know, this is what I do. Like, imagine you were this, you're expert in this. This is what I do. Like, you know, I'm looking for ideas with this specification. This is my requirement. This is my constraint. And your response should be this way. Great. Now it's going to get me better results. And I'm like, great. This is useful. ChatGPT actually helps me brainstorm great ideas. But then next time I have to do it again, I'm going to have to literally type the entire prompt over and over again because ChatGPT is not going to remember what is going on. Like, you know, what we did before, what we liked. This is where we need custom instructions to tell ChatGPT who we are, what we need, and how it should sort of give us the results. So if you go to your profile, then you're going to see the settings called customize ChatGPT. Here you have like two fields. The first one says, what would you like ChatGPT to know about you to provide better responses? This is our opportunity to customize ChatGPT so we can always get consistent and personalized results without having to write those prompts over and over again. For example, a travel blogger, we can just say like, I'm a travel blogger specializing in off bin path destinations and authentic culture. My audience consists of adventurous millennials, agency travelers who are looking for unique Instagram worthy experiences that go beyond typical tourist attractions. I focus on sustainable and responsible travel, often highlighting local communities and eco-friendly practices. So now every time we ask ChatGPT to give us some ideas, it's going to remember like, you know, these are the things we care about. And this is what ChatGPT should also know to give us those tailored responses. Likewise for our results, ChatGPT is going to write differently every single time because it's just like, you know, AI generating stuff. It doesn't know how it should respond yet. So in our second box where it says, how would you like ChatGPT response? This is where we can actually like customize ChatGPT to give us a response exactly the way we like it. So here I could say things like, hey, when suggesting destinations or activities, prioritize lesser known locations and unique experiences over popular tourist spots. Include practical information such as best time for travel, local transportation, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna stop yapping. I hope you get the idea of like what I mean by, you know, how would you like ChatGPT response and where you should put. Of course, if you hover over, ChatGPT is also gonna give you like some starting uh, you know pointers in terms of how you should answer this question so i would just say like you know play around with this custom instructions and see if this could help you know transform your workflow and make you more productive and creative with ai so now if i use the same prompt again the results i'm getting a lot more tailored and personalized to what i've mentioned in the custom instructions i'm getting better ideas and it's faster okay time to move on to the second settings Again, we're going to go to a profile. Now we're going to go to settings. And here on the left side, you're going to see this thing called personalization. And here we have a feature called memory. So this one's only for paid users. So if you're a free user, I'm sorry, this one's not available for you. But if you turn that feature on, ChatGPT, as you're chatting with it, it's going to start understanding who you are and like what your needs automatically. And it's going to like start making a memory. So let's say you mentioned that, you know, you're going on a Croatia trip during these dates. ChatGPT is going to remember those details. So when you ask up a follow-up question, it's going to automatically have that context with it and it's going to give you that answer. For the most part, you don't have to do anything. As you're interacting with ChatGPT, it's going to start like, you know, knowing where your business is, what you do for work, like, you know, where do you live and all that stuff based on what you've already mentioned in your chats. So it can already do personalized responses for you. But if you want ChatGPT to remember something specific in your prompt, you can just always say like, hey, remember, Remember that I like concise prompts. Remember, I just got a puppy. So you can like basically tell ChatGPT what to remember. So it will sort of remember for you. But again, if you're feeling spooky about it, and if you see here, there's a button called manage. And if you go there, you can actually see the list of things ChatGPT already remembers about you. So if there is something that is not relevant anymore, you can just go ahead and delete that memory. Or if your memory is full, like in my case, you can select certain memories to delete. So you have room for more memories. I don't know what the limits are, but seems like I've already hit my limit for the memory here. As a reminder, don't share sensitive or confidential information within ChatGPT, which brings us to our third feature. If you go to a new chat, then drop down for the models, you're gonna see this option called temporary chat. So if you just enable it, it's kind of like a private mode for ChatGPT. So here it says that, you know, whatever you say in this chat, it will not be used for memories. It will not be used to train their models. And for safety purposes, they will only keep the copy for up to 30 days. So if there is something like slightly sensitive information you want to share, like, you know, want to chat about, you can use 
this sort of feature for temporary chat, which is sort of useful. I'm actually surprised like so many people don't know about this, even though it's like right there. Also, if you're one of those people who associate dark mode as productivity, if you just go to your profile, then go to settings and then go to general under theme, this is where you can switch between like a dark and a light mode. You're welcome. And I got one more bonus tip. If you want to improve your prompts to like get better chat GPT results, I like using this app called Prompt Genie, which is a free plan where you can just type whatever task you want AI to do. And now it's going to generate like a more detailed and structure prompt, which will get you better chat GPT results. Anyway, these were the settings, which I feel like are super useful to get better chat GPT results and like make the whole workflow faster. If you learned something new, give a thumbs up, leave a comment in terms of which setting helps you the most and subscribe to the channel for more air tools and workflows. I'll see you in the next videos.